So thank you and I want to move for a second reading of this bill um, and the bill is a very simple bill and it's an amendment to the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act 2013. Now, I just want to preempt everything I'm going to say by a bit of an explanation because the worst criticism I've had of this bill uh, has been from those who say, but you are continuing to criminalise women for having an abortion. Well, just a little bit of history on it. I have tried twice to amend the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act by removing any reference to the criminalisation of women or medical practitioners who may seek to procure an abortion in this country. And on both occasions, parliamentary legal advice, not external legal advice or some solicitor I would have uh, gone to to ask their opinion or my party would go to, but parliamentary legal advice has been, if you do this, it will be unconstitutional because of the Eighth Amendment. And here I rest my case, what we really need what will end up uh, dealing with all of these complexities of the criminalisation of women and everything else that um, stems from it, including the likelihood of women dying in this country because they seek an abortion and it's illegal uh, to give them one. Um, the only thing that will deal with that is a, a referendum on the Eighth Amendment. And as we know, the Citizens' Assembly is progressing ahead. We've debated all the ins and outs of that uh, uh, quite a bit. And I'm sure that debate will come into it again tonight um, because I understand there's an amendment from the government to just leave it in the hands of the Citizens' Assembly. Um, I did try on the basis of moving section 22 of this act to say it shall not be an offence for a pregnant woman, her advisor, her doctor or other health worker to terminate a pregnancy as long as this decision is taken in the course of uh, a woman making that decision and with her valid consent. Out of order, uh, Deputy Smith, you'll have to try something else. So Deputy Smith and the AA people before profit are moving a simple bill which we'd rather not be doing, but I'm going to explain now in a few minutes that I have why we're doing it, uh, and that is to say, to amend the section 22 of the Act, to say that a person who is guilty of an offence under this section shall be liable to a fine of not more than one euro. Now, that sounds like I'm being facetious or frivolising it. I am not, au contraire. I am trying to deal with the abortion and the stigma that lies around it in this country. Um, it's been a kind of a strange day insofar as there's a convergence and a lady, which we just discussed, uh, the tomb babies, this bill, and indeed, to some extent, uh, the uh, struggle for a mother to get health service for her, her child. I'm talking about Vera Toomey in this case. Um, but it's been a day full of this discussion about the rights of women and their control over their own lives in this country. Um, and I think that we do have to say that the link between all of these is that for too long we have had a kind of a co coherent uh, enterprise between the state and the church to dominate and control women's lives. Um, the control of our reproductive lives is just unbelievably uh, out of order in, in, in the 21st century. And in particular, that control has manifested itself as a, as, as a kind of and a working class women in respectable form of that oppressed country is uh, the Eighth Amendment and the denial of women in this country over the control of their own fertility and making decisions over their own life. So what we're trying to do is to begin the process of decriminalising uh, women's choices. And the bill is simple, it's not complicated, and it is not about trying to say that, uh, yeah, we must remain criminals, but only for a small sentence. The reason for the bill is because in the very recent past, there have been not very far away from us, probably 60, 65 miles, uh, or 80 or 70, 90 kilometres, three women arrested and charged before the courts in Northern Ireland for procuring the abortion pill. 
Um, somebody might say this bill doesn't deal with backstreet abortions. The form of backstreet abortions, if it can be called such in this country, is the abortion pill, except that the abortion pill is safe as declared by the World Health Organization and is increasingly being sought by young women as a form of controlling their fertility and dealing with crises pregnancies. And in the North, three women, a mother of an, under, an underage child and two women who uh, tried to self-abort or did self-abort using the pill have been before the courts. And in the North could face a life sentence. Not much different to a 14 year sentence, which is what they could in this state. That the section uh, 22, the person who is guilty of this offence uh, shall be liable to an indictment, a fine or an imprisonment for a term not exceeding 14 years or both. A prosecution for this offence shall also be brought only with or by the consent uh, of the Director of Public Prosecutions. But you see here, I want to argue in a very twisted and really in a very silly way, the leader of this country, uh, the Taoiseach, today in response uh, to my contribution to him at Taoiseach's questions about the June babies, said that uh, we could not support your bill, Deputy, because what would happen if a partner kicked a pregnant woman and then you, you're saying they can only be fined a euro? Now, this is really kind of disgraceful and silly in a way, coming from the leader of a country to equate the attempt in this bill with an attempt to decriminalise grievous bodily harm and assault. That is not what I am saying. What we are saying here tonight is decriminalise abortion for women, not decriminalise grievous bodily harm or assault on women is what that amounts to. Indeed, it's alarming that it, during this week in a court uh, recently, a man who beat up his partner uh, in front of her children and beat her very badly was referred to the possibility of doing community service and nothing to do with uh, the legislation that I'm trying to alter tonight. So the process of decriminalised women has to begin and it has to begin before we wait forever for uh, the, the Citizens Assembly to make its adjudication, before we wait for the outcome of that and then the possibility if and when of a referendum on the Eighth Amendment and it has to begin because every day in this country at least three young women access the abortion pill and therefore at least three young women are faced with the potential 14 year uh, sentence hanging over them. This country is changing and the message has to be sent out through measures like this that we are turning our backs on the days of the killing fields of Tume, we're turning our backs on the Magdalene laundries, we're turning our backs on the days when this, the church in this country dominated our lives by being obsessed with our pregnant bodies. And we cannot allow a sentence of 14 years remain while uh, everybody else navel gazes and looks at how we're going to deal with it. To those deputies who have indicated to me already that either they're going to abstain or vote against, but particularly to those who are abstaining, and I would say particularly to those um, like Catherine Sapone and the independents who are in government, I want to ask you to think what amendment would you put to this bill that would satisfy your idea of how women who procure an abortion in the state or young women who take the abortion pill should be responded to? Should we give them 10 years instead of 14? Should the fine be 10 euro or 100 euro? You tell me and amend accordingly and let's see what you, we can come out with. If you don't agree, with the criminal law, and to those who say they're abstaining because of legal opinion, well, I'm afraid there's all sorts of legal opinion you can get. I could go down the road and pay a solicitor for another set of legal opinion. But I think what you're really saying is that you're going to leave women, and in particular young women, vulnerable to a hefty sentence while we wait for the other processes that have been uh, instigated in this house to stall the process of decriminalising abortion, of decriminalising and women and are finally making our choices free, legal and safe in this country. So it's not an academic argument because it's happening in Northern Ireland and it's not a sort of a, well, you know, I can wait because the legal opinion says this, that and the other. This is reality and I am going to make a special appeal to those who think they, uh, it's okay to abstain or uh, that, that we can wait until the Citizens' Assembly. If you've been out campaigning with us 
standing on the street with your repealed t-shirt and your badges, if you've been marching, if you really believe in what you're saying when you protest against the draconian use of legislation against women in this country, then please, please think twice, vote with your conscience, don't be bound by party constrictions on your beliefs, and if you think this bill isn't good enough, then propose amendments. But don't support an amendment that kicks for touch and says it is okay to continually leave women and their medical advisors with both the, the stigma, the threat, and the chill factor of a 14-year sentence hanging over, hanging over their lives. I move, and Deputy Coppinger will share the time. Ruth Coppinger has nine, ten minutes left. 